Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is an NAD Series 20 Stereo Amplifier 3020, which is uh, like a classical uh, amplifier that is pretty well regarded in uh, audiophile uh, circles. It's not really an audiophile amplifier, it was um, pretty inexpensive back in the day and delivered quite some sound for the price. So this is a very good value for money amplifier uh, that I apparently scored for free when it was about to go to the trash. And the only thing that is obviously wrong with it is it's missing one of the knobs here which you can actually buy uh, from various sellers on eBay for example, so I might do that. And the other thing that is obviously I don't want to say wrong, but uh, there's obviously some tinkering going on. You see these wires here. So here's where these wires go. They uh, go in <laughs> through the ventilation slots here, so I don't really know what that is all about. And there's also some tape in there. It's missing some screws. I don't really know what's going on there. We'll have a look. First of all, let's take a look at the machine here. Uh, yeah, this doesn't belong. Oh, it just comes off. It's like, I don't know why they did this. This is the volume knob. Oh, and it's a bit scratchy. So the it's bent to this side here, I think, so it can't really... Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit loose in there, but we can fix that. The other stuff, there's a couple of scratches, but not very many. Um, Possibly the other knob is still uh, in the box I found this in uh, when I saved it, but I didn't find the knob. Had a look around, uh, but didn't find it. But it may have come off before. What's really interesting about these is uh, the back panel, which is pretty, it's, it's angled like you can uh, plug in your plugs from the top here. Which is pretty neat actually. I, I really like this. You don't have to reach around the whole unit when you want to change something. Uh, just can do it reaching in here, in this little compartment here, and change the plugs. It only has one uh, pair of speakers. It has the capability to connect one pair of speakers. All this stuff seems to be in decent shape. Uh, the only downside to this, of course, is, or one of the downsides, I don't know if there's other downsides, the one that is obvious to me at the moment is that uh, all the dust just falls down into the jacks here. And, uh, yeah, that's obviously not good for the contacts. Uh, you might get loose contacts there over the time if you don't clean it regularly. There's a little grounding post, which is pretty, pretty decent. This is all metal, pretty thin metal, but this is an uh, um, inexpensively made uh, device. So here's the backplate, NAD, which obviously means new acoustic dimension, <laughs> model number 3020, which is, I think this is the first uh, model of these. Uh, there were several models over the years. I don't really know when this came out. I think in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, stereo amplifier, power source, switchable from uh, 170 volts to 240 volts. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you have to rewire something, but I think... Yeah, I think so. It says wired for 220 volts. Uh, so you can pro probably plug something in on the inside to change that. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of the inside, let's have a look inside. I always love these old amplifiers. Although this is a cheaply made unit, or relatively cheaply made unit, can still see that there's more thought put into this <laughs> than uh, they would do today. It feels pretty. It feels pretty cheap uh, compared to the stuff 
that I worked on before, which were the 70s, like uh, Morans and uh, Pioneer and sensory units. If you saw videos on my channel, maybe. If you're interested in this, you might want to watch those videos. <laughs> so here we are. Doesn't look too bad to me at all. I probably have to put some some effort into cleaning this, but... Oh! I see something. So here is a burned resistor. I don't know if you can see that, but this is pretty badly burned. I don't know how that happened, because it apparently, as it says on the circuit board there, is the connection to the little ground screw here, which should be connected to the ground on the, uh, on the record player, uh, usually. I don't know how anybody would manage to blow that thing up. Yeah, otherwise it doesn't look like there's anything obviously wrong with this other than that it's uh, pretty uh, dirty. Let's see where the wires from the back side go, I guess. I think I just wanna I wanna open this up and remove these wires altogether. I don't think that they are they serve any purpose. Maybe somebody added uh, like a new input. That's my guess. Or somebody added a new output for more speakers, but then these these flimsy wires would be pretty flimsy. I don't really know. Let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> Maybe this is another one for the uh, Mods Gone Wild category. So I definitely want to, if this works, definitely I want to get one a new knob there because they are, I got this for free basically and these are pretty, they are like like 100 euros at the very least I guess in good, good shape, good condition. So it's it's very worth it buying a new uh, knob here or switch. Okay, let's just see. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so somebody apparently seems to have added another uh, phono input here. So I'm just going to, this is just soldered to the, to the phono jacks there. And that's probably how they managed to burn this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to desolder these and uh, pretend that this never happened. All right. Oh, and I'm also, what's this all about? Oh, okay, the screws. Somebody added long screws. Uh, these botch wires look original here. So somebody added these long screws here. Uh, which are connected to uh, the main transistors. So don't really know if that is a good idea. Maybe I'll, I'll look f if I can find some shorter screws. Uh, at some point. Let's desolder the, the wild uh, funnel input there. It's not even, the soldering is not even good. It's just like, yeah. Somebody who had no idea what he was doing did this, I guess. So our burnt resistor here is just connected to the ground and it's just for the, for the funnel ground. So uh, this is going to work without this. Uh, yeah. So I should find myself a uh, schematic for this and see if there's the right transistors in there. So uh, yeah, let me just very quickly look for a schematic. I'll be right back. Okay, I literally found a bug. It's like a, a roach or something, I don't know. It is long dead. <laughs> it was was in there. 
nesting in there. <clears throat> okay, here's the service manual, and we should have 2N3055 and MJ2955 transistors for the power amp. So let's see. MJ2955, 2N3055. Yep. Seems to be correct. There seem to be, I think, maybe this one has been replaced. Maybe all of them have been replaced, I don't really know. Um, okay, let's uh, clean this a bit and do some tests. <coughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so this already looks a lot better than before. I think we can try to plug it in, I guess. <sighs> Fingers crossed this just works. Maybe it does. Maybe something expl explodes. Okay, I think I, w I want to plug this into my uh, isolation transformer. Okay, I have the isolation transformer running there. Uh, yeah, let's plug it in. Let's see. Plugged in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Turning it on for the first time. Let's see. Ah, and it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. Ah, there we go. Ah, it has like a like a um, it has like a delay before it turns on. Okay. Okay, nothing exploded. Uh, let's do some measurements. I think. Okay, I'm measuring uh, the DC voltage on the outputs. Uh, if we get too much DC, that is higher than a couple of millivolts. Uh, we are going to have a problem if we are connecting speakers, so let's see what that does. Okay, so that's just a couple of millivolts and it is falling actually. Yeah, that's all right. Let's check the other channel. Okay, the other channel is the same. So I think we are we're okay to hook up some speakers and try something. Okay, let's turn it on first of all and see if the Speakers explode. Okay, they hum. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good at all. So this has some serious issues. And I would guess that because this was uh, like uh, 100 hertz hum again, uh, that this has some issues with the capacitors. Most likely. Hmm, so this is going to be some repairing after all. So it's a couple of days later and I actually did some research on the issue that I had with the um, power on instant noise. And it seems to be a common issue. I found um, for the 3020A and the 3020B I found that this is a pretty common issue. These seem to have like, like a um, like I thought, they seem to have like a delay uh, before they are switching on the speaker outputs. And um, usually on the A and B models, it's like two capacitors that commonly fail that are responsible for the delay. So if those fail, you just get straight off. Uh, the, the speakers are switched on or the speaker outputs are 
switched on right away and um, give all the power on noises uh, which we heard. So um, I still suspect this is a capacitor issue and I think this is an issue with the capacitors that are responsible for this delay circuitry. Um, yeah, there's a way to quickly check if the fault is in the preamp section or the power amp section that I'm going to show you. So the first thing to try on these, uh, if you have uh, a separate preamp and power amp section, uh, you can just remove the jumpers that are usually in there to check if the power amp section uh, outputs the hum without anything attached to it or if the hum comes from the preamp section. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to power this up without these little wires and see if it does the same hum. Okay, switching on. Yep, and I have the same I have the same or basically I have another hum issue here. <laughs> that was clearly not the hum we had before with the um, preamp section in there. Uh, it was like, this was 100 hertz hum, this was like a, a mains uh, frequency hum. Uh, the mains frequency actually is at 50 hertz, but you get a 100 hertz hum from uh, the mains if the filter capacitors are bad. So I think, I hope, really, that the issue with this is just many, many bad capacitors. And that may very well be because this thing is pretty old and they run pretty pretty hot. Uh, so the capacitors are pretty stressed in there. And as I always say, these electrolytic capacitors age, and uh, sometimes they don't age very well. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to give it a shot and order the capacitors necessary for this. And, uh, yeah. Let's try if we get the other hum bag with uh, the thingles inserted there. That was another hum. Okay, testing with the jumper wires in. Mm. Yep, that definitely is a louder hum and another frequency as well. So we have two separate hums, it seems. One comes from the preamp and one comes from the power amp. So um, the one from the preamp is probably, like I mentioned, the um, power on delay, which isn't working anymore due to bad capacitors, probably. And the other hum is just the mains filtering issue, probably. So yeah, I think that's the thing I want to try on this one. It's probably worth it. As I mentioned, I got this for free completely. So I ordered all the capacitors that are in here. Um, I ordered Panasonic FC caps. So they are not the, the very best Panasonic has to offer, but they are very um, okay for restoration work on these old um, amplifiers. Use them a lot on everything, basically. Um, just as a replacement for standard caps. So these are the main filter caps. They might be still okay. These are like um, 2200 microfarad caps. Um, usually the bigger ones, in my experience at least, the smaller values fail quicker than the um, larger capacitors. Uh, but these are pretty these are pretty under stress, I guess, uh, because they are the main filter caps. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to replace all the capacitors in this thing because I don't know for sure um, which ones are responsible for the um, power on delay. I saw in a video about the um, 3020A model that there's um, two 47 microfarad ones right next to the um, treble control there, but the board layout is completely different. Um, they, they are, in this case, there's um, 47 microfarad caps there too, but I don't know if they are responsible for the delay circuitry. Um, and I don't wanna, I, I, there's no need to check that really, so I'm just going to replace 
every capacitor. Maybe I'll start with these and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I probably should do that to try that. Um, in the A and I believe in the B model, these are the ones responsible for this um, loud power on noise directly after powering on uh, that we heard prominently. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to replace these two with um, the same value, maybe a bit higher voltage, uh, good Panasonic FC capacitors, and I'll be right back. Okay, I replaced uh, the two capacitors I was pointing at that I suspect are responsible for the um, power on delay thing. Uh, let's try if that changed anything. Just going to where's the plug? There's the plug. Let's see if the power on. No, it's exactly the same. So these were not the ones uh, responsible for that. Uh, yeah, let's go and replace all the capacitors in there. I think I want to start with the big filter caps, uh, but at very first I'm just going to pull the plug again. And uh, I always, or at least I try to remember uh, taking photos of the board so I can get the uh, right orientation of the capacitors. Because the board is not very conveniently marked, I think. So I just take photos of all the parts that have capacitors in there. And then I'm just working through this. I have my capacitors here. Lots and lots of them. I'm just going to go through and replace them all with new ones. Uh, so I'm just going to make a little montage <laughs> of replacing the capacitors. And I hope that fixes the issue. So I just removed uh, the big filter caps the mains filter caps and as you can see they were glued together and they look a bit bulgy on the bottom I don't know if they really are uh, it looks pretty messy, the glue looks pretty messy so you can't really tell this gets brown after a while and it's really sticky and uh, sometimes this glue becomes conductive so that might be a problem so I'm just going to remove as much of that as I can from the board uh, yeah, does look nice. <laughs> um, just just to point out that most of these are glued in, uh, the bigger ones usually, and the glue is not very very nice. And upon cleaning this with IPA, it smells a bit fishy, which is maybe the smell of electrolyte. So um. Yeah, they might very well be culprits of what we experienced. Uh, yeah. But I guess most of the caps in here uh, have had it over time, so I'm just going to replace all of them, like I said. And uh, clean off this mess here a bit. So and instead of the glue, I'm just going to um, cable tie these large caps together, as is common practice also, to keep them from vibrating and uh, dangling around. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So this daughter board was on there with these uh, clipping things that just feed through these holes there and um, clip in. So you can just um, obviously push these with some pliers in them. Just get them out there so you can work on this board. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of capacitors on there. Okay, so this one definitely has seen better days. That's a leaky one on that little um, preamp board, I guess. That's probably what it is. Okay, I recap nearly all of it, except for this little board, which is, I think, for the LED peak meter. Uh, let's see if we can get it out there without much hassle. I think there's two screws. Take a look at the soldering on these LEDs. <laughs> this is how this came from factory. Wow. And here it is, on the messy desk, just for you, uh, not just for you, but also for me, uh, completely recapped with good Panasonic caps with some exceptions. I ran out of one microfarad caps, so I used uh, like Jamicon or something like that on there. Um, the rest is Panasonic caps, good ones. Uh, yeah, if my theory is correct, this should now work, so let's try. Fingers crossed. Okay, here it is. Let's uh, put it into aux, I guess. Aux. And um, turning on the volume, plugging in. If I can find the plug, all this mess here. Okay, let's see. 
Maybe we get some exploding caps. <coughs> I don't hope so. Okay, let's turn it on. Yep. And no hum anymore. <laughs> okay, I got some scratchy pots there. But we don't have any hum on this, ladies and gentlemen. This might just work. <laughs> so it was just a capacitor issue, probably. So I now hooked up my phone with uh, some music by Focus 10. Uh, you will probably recognize uh, because I'm using his music all the time and I want to thank him for that. Uh, links are in the description. And this actually works and sounds pretty darn good. Got some scratchy potential meters still. So, yes, uh, this thing seems to work so far. Uh, I'm gonna clean the potentiometers and yeah, do some more restoration work. And then uh, we'll wrap this up and have a nice uh, refurbished NAD3020 from the first series, series 20. Nice. So these are all more or less open potentiometers, so I'm just going to spray inside there. And turning it. This is the, the most scratchy one because it's open on the top. It's the balance potentiometer. Just turn this around a bit. The same goes for the switches. I'm just going to spray some into all openings I can see generously. And then work the switches some. Man, this thing really, really sounds sweet. Um, the people who consider this audiophile are not completely mistaken. This is a very sweet sounding amp. And I've heard quite some amplifiers. And even though my, my speakers here are pretty done with, um, I have to um, replace the foam at some point, as you can see here. They still sound amazing on this amplifier. Nice one. Uh, remember those long screws that are under the um, transistors, the power transistors here? Uh, they are there. These are actually the original screws. The only thing that the person who last um, worked on this did wrong is uh, the direction of the screws. They, the nuts are uh, on this side of the board normally, so they they protrude on this side, which doesn't matter. Uh, they won't short out with anything if they protrude here. So I'm just going to change that. I'm going to change the thermal paste under these uh, TO3 transistors anyway. Uh, maybe I'll also replace the sheets there. Um, I know that there's some silicon uh, like heat conductive pads that I could use for these but I don't think I have any. I'll have to look. No I don't. I don't have any. 
So I'm, I'm just going to clean this up and add some new thermal paste there and uh, <laughs> turn the screws around. So I centered these knobs by just, uh, yeah, you can just pull them off basically and uh, this is like a little notch where it, where it sits in when it's centered and then you just push it in there so it's dead center. These were on there like like so or something. That's pretty... I don't know. <laughs> ah, I don't like that. That's better now. I probably have to get these off um, again and clean them thoroughly at some point. Oh, the same goes for these switches here. I can get off and I should get a new one for the funnel switch here. So as for aligning this thing, it is pretty complicated. Um, it doesn't seem like a complicated uh, thing, but there is, I have to connect the DC millivoltmeter across R654 and R653 for the respective um, right and left channel. Uh, that wouldn't be a problem if R654 or X, uh, R653 were on the board. They are not populated. Um, RX2 and RX1 are populated. Uh, they are the actual resistors you place to set the idle current or the idling current of the um, uh, transistors. So they are set and they are set to different values. So I guess that somebody set these for the transistors that are in there. But uh, yeah, usually this would go like um, I would insert R646 uh, no, I would insert something in R654. I would measure across R654. But I would have to put a resistor there, and there's no resistor, so I have no idea what to put there <laughs> to measure the right uh, voltages. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I could then use Rx1 and Rx2 to um, set the value so that it reaches uh, something between 30 millivolts and 60 millivolts. Uh, yeah, I could also place like a variable resistor in these places, but I actually have no idea how to measure the voltage I should measure. So if any one of you knows how this procedure works exactly, on this particular version of the NAD3020, which appears to be the, the old version where you can, pro basically there are a couple of different versions of this board which all have the same case. Um, this is the one that has the filter caps right behind the um, phones jack here. Mm. More recent versions have the filter caps here, and even more recent versions only have two filter caps, mains filter caps, um, except for the four that these have. Uh, yeah, let me show you the resistors I'm talking about. So here's my power amp section, and there's my um, RX2, RX1. These are the resistors that actually set the idling current. So there are markings for R654 underneath this thingo and R653 underneath here. But I have no idea, and it's not very clear from the uh, silk screen on the board where they, where exactly I should put resistors um, to measure between. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to pass on that one. I don't, I don't know how to do it really. So I'm just not touching this as this works as it is. I don't know if the idling current is set exactly right, but uh, this doesn't run hot or anything, so I guess it is about right. And um, the voltages given in the service manual, where this comes from, this sheet I showed you, um, 
they are pretty vague. It's between 30 and 60 millivolts. So, um, yeah. I am going to, to link the service manual below, by the way. Um, so you can have a look if you want to. Uh, what I am going to do, because I found these, uh, I am going to set the, the BIOS, the DC offset. So the DC offset, I can just hook up a multimeter to the... Um, to the speaker terminals and adjust these two which are VR5 and VR6 for the two channels uh, so that the voltage is as close as possible to zero basically. Uh, so I have to let this run for five minutes and then set the voltage with just a meter connected to the speaker terminals. So that's what I'm going to do now I'm sorry about, I couldn't show you the adjustment for the idling current, but uh, yeah, as I said, I just, I just don't get it, basically. So if you have ideas, put them in the comments, please. Uh, yeah. So, I'm just going to try to stick this in there. Like so, which works pretty well. On these particular speaker terminals. Just set it to millivolts, and uh, yeah, I'm turning it on and, and letting it run for five minutes, and then I have like a measurement I can work with. Okay, um, setting the volume to zero, turning it on, and now I should wait for five minutes and uh, read the millivolts and adjust that to close to zero. Oh, and it's pretty high, which um, explains the, the little pop it does when you turn it on, because uh, basically the there's DC voltage of a couple of millivolts um, coming to the speakers. And it's actually negative voltage. <laughs> so that's interesting. Okay, it should now stabilize somewhere and I should adjust it for um, as close to zero as I can. I'm just going to set a timer to five minutes. And I'll be right back. Okay, f five minutes later and it's still at 82 millivolts, which isn't, isn't great. It's not that. It's not destroying any speakers probably. But, yeah, we're going to see if we can get this down a bit and indeed we can but not all that much <laughs> that's about all we can get okay let's check the other channel so we can bring that one down Something like one millivolt, which is, yeah, that's pretty good. Probably as good as it gets. Hmm. Let's see about the other channel. Okay, so that's what we get for the right channel. That's it's not getting any better than that. Hmm. Maybe I'll clean the potentiometer again, but I think there, uh, that's the one with the old original transistors in there. Hmm. That's actually far from perfect. I was hoping to get it much lower. So and the little variable resistors actually are fine. This is the right channel. Uh, I measured the wrong pin there. It's like 1.2, 1 1.3 kilo ohms resistance. And this is the other channel. Just like 1k and it's not set to maximum. So, yeah, that's that's all good. So maybe, yeah, I don't really know. We should set the idling current probably. Uh, at least it's better than before. Hmm. But it must be, there must be something else that is a bit out of uh, focus there. So, uh, yeah, that's not great. 
I don't know what to change there, really. So I just cleaned uh, the little variable resistors there a bit. Maybe we'll get something better now. So it's like very much off. This is like the best I can get. The resi variable resistors uh, seem to work just fine. And I cleaned them with uh, some uh, good tuner spray. But they're still the same. And they seem. Um, I measured the uh, actual resistance and they seem to work smoothly and nicely. So that's the best I can get on the right channel. The left channel is very close to zero, but this one has uh, like 50 milli millivolts, 55 millivolts off set. That's not great. It's not going to kill any speakers, but um, yeah. Hmm. So let's see if it still works at least. Okay, that's the little uh, power on thing. Okay, so it still works. Uh, the power meter doesn't do much, uh, but these speakers are pretty loud, so I guess if I connected larger speakers, uh, this would probably work. It works, the first two LEDs, I can get them to work um, while not blowing up my, my ears. If I turn this up any louder, it will probably blow my, my brains out. Uh, so. Yeah, this is pretty loud, this is working. Uh, there's one thing to do still, um, to turn around the screws on the power transistors there, so that um, there's no danger of them shorting out with the bottom case. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So I'm just using a pair of pliers from the other side, uh, and a screwdriver from this side. So, removed all the screws, um, I'm just going to, I think I can take the whole heat sink out and clean it a bit and um, like renew the pads, the, like the mylar insulation under there. It should probably be a good idea because it's and the heat, uh, the thermal paste there. So they are, are they soldered in? Yes, they are soldered in. Okay, so I'm just going to desolder them. <laughs> and re-solder them, actually. So I think one already fell out. <laughs> oh, okay, they're all falling out. Okay, so normally these would uh, sit in sockets, but I guess they brought it down, brought down the cost. So I can just remove this whole thing here <laughs> and clean off, clean up the board. And okay, so I'm going to clean this heatsink, and I have to put back the little insulators that are in there. There are like these little insulator uh, like pipes to prevent the legs of the transistors to short out against the um, heatsink. So I have to find those, they just fell to the floor. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to come up with some solution to that, I'm going to insulate the legs of the transistors. Okay, so I definitely need some uh, TO3 new mylar pads there uh, to replace all these which I'm going to do 
I'm just uh, I'm going to have to order these because I don't have any in stock here. Okay, these are all pretty done with, but they are clean now. <laughs> I am going to order new ones anyway. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, this is going to take longer than I expected, as usual, with these kinds of uh, restoration things. So, one last thing for today. I kind of decided to um, rebuild this from the ground up. Uh, so, I thought I might as well order one of those to fit here, to complete the thing. Yeah, and there we are. Now it has all the buttons back, which makes it instantly look a lot better. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to postpone this uh, the rest of this restoration to another episode. So, uh, so much for now. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this was informative. Um, hope to get as many of these fine little amplifiers back to life and to use as possible with this video. I found that there's not many videos about these on YouTube. I was looking for the um, idling current thing and I didn't find any useful information on that. So I hope to bring you that information uh, in the next episode. If somebody or myself can figure it out, um, I would be glad. I'm ordering the parts I need. Uh, the Mylar insulator <laughs> situation isn't great, so I have to order some of those. And uh, yeah, I probably order some new transistors while I'm at, while I'm at it, so I have um, matching transistors in there, which is always a nice touch. Isn't completely necessary, of course, but um, as we had the different uh, bias measurements there, um, it might help to have um, some matched pairs of transistors in there. So. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this, hope you stay tuned on this channel, there's a lot of retro computing stuff going on usually, but I'm also a huge um, fan of vintage audio gear and I enjoy working on these things and using them in the end, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, I'm Jan Beta, check out my Patreon, check out my website, the links are below in the description. You can follow me on Twitter if you like um, these kind of uh, hobbyist, uh, semi-amateurish, uh, repairing things, uh, sharing information with the world via YouTube. Thanks for watching, I'm Jan Beta, hopefully see you next time. Bye!